I got a comment a while ago on one of my videos where the guy said something like, Ramsey, I think you have a very narrow view of what a fight is, because a fight is more than just hand-to-hand -hand combat. And yes, I know that. I understand that fighting encompasses all aspects of fighting, including fighting with weapons, sport fights, street fights, all that stuff. And, and yes, I am, a, I am a disciple of martial arts, not just mixed martial arts. Okay? I have studied many different martial arts over the years, including uh, various weapons, weapon styles, Okinawan, Kubudo, practical weapons, um, knives, swords. I, I've got a fantastic collection of Chinese swords at home. Um, Taiji Jin, you know, the, the Tai Chi sword form. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, historical um, martial arts, you know, English longsword, broadsword, that sort of thing. Now, I, I love that stuff. It's fantastic. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I think it's, it's just really interesting to me to learn how to win fights, not, not just sport fights, but all kinds of fights. In fact, I, I go through scenarios in my mind like, uh, what if there was a zombie apocalypse? How would I win that fight? How would I beat the zombies? You know, you know thing, fights that would never even happen. Okay. So I'm constantly, th constantly thinking, how do I win fights again? Every type of fight scenario possible. Now, with that out of the way, I'm going to show you a video some clips of a video of a sparring match um, between a kendo expert and a Filipino stick fighting guy. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, as soon as we try to fight with weapons, things fall apart. Well, literally, if we're actually fighting with the weapons, because, you know, we'll, we'll kill each other with those. If I take an, out an actual sword, an actual Daito Katana, and start slashing you with it, as opposed to, you know, a Boken when we're well protected with the, the training armor, yeah, we don't walk away from that. You know, if you take out a couple of uh, Eskrima sticks or Kali sticks and start hitting somebody with those, yeah, they, they don't walk away from that. Well, not without, you know, skull fractures and, and, and serious injuries, okay? So... When we are talking about competition with weapons or fighting with weapons, most of that is theoretical. Like even if you've seen those, those M1 global knight fights where the guys uh, put on the suits of armor and have the swords and the shields and they bash each other with these blunted swords. Yeah, it's, it's fun to watch. It's fantastic. It's, it's lots of fun. But is it realistic? No, it's not because, well... First of all, they're hitting each other with a blunted edge of a sword against full plate armor, which does nothing except a little bit of blunt impact force. And secondly, that's, that's not the way uh, medieval knights actually fought. If they're fighting somebody with, with um, full plate armor and you've got a long sword, again, you, you're not swinging that at full plate armor. That'll just blunt the sword. So what do you do? You, you um, do what they call half-sorting. We hold the sword by the blade, actually. And a lot of those uh, English long swords, the, the part closest to the hilt was actually flat. It was already blunted. Some of them weren't, some of them were. But you hold it by the blade, and then you drive the point into the cracks between the armor, or you hold it upside down and use the pommel of the hilt as a warhammer. So again, the reality is very different than, uh, than sparring with weapons, totally different. Because again, we have to spar when we spar with weapons in a way that we can walk away from. So we use fake weapons or we use special armor, uh, protective gear, etc. And again, that's, that's not realistic because it doesn't give us the same type of feedback. And that's why I argue that the best weapons fighter is the guy who understands how to use his own body first. And the weapon is simply an extension of the body. So if you have the world's best boxer, you know, the guy who can touch you with his jab any way he wants, and he's super fast, and he understands distance perfectly, and you give him a knife, guess what? He's now the world's best knife fighter. Take a look at this match between a kendo practitioner and a Filipino stick fighter. 
and it's really exciting to watch if it were a contest of who could tap each other with their stick the most. But we have to understand what these weapons actually represent. Now that boken, the, the wooden sword, is representative of a blade, and each strike with that to the head or the neck should represent death, and you see how that guy's overhooking the blade. Now, if this were a real sword, that doesn't work. That doesn't work at all, you cut up your arm doing that. But of course, since the stick fighter is not being hurt, he's not being cut by the boken, he's able to keep going and going until eventually the kendo fighter quits. And he feels pretty good about himself, he, he just won that stick fighting match. But take a look at this. In the first three seconds of the match, the kendo expert chops the stick fighter twice, once on the top of the head and once right on the neck. Were this a real fight, that would be death and or decapitation. Okay. Now, is it fun to watch? Yeah, it's, it's really exciting to see these two guys smash, smash each other with sticks. Is it realistic? No. Absolutely not. Because again, they're not training with real weapons, they're not training realistically. Now, how do we fix that problem? Well, we don't really. Unless, uh, unless you find human life expendable and you have a bunch of people who are willing to die just so you can practice your technique, or unless somebody manages to invent uh, android sparring partners that realistically emulate humans without killing you. Good luck with that. Um, so, it's a, it's a whole different conundrum. So a lot of times I hear people brag about, you know, being these weapons fighting experts and, and I always take it with a grain of salt because in my experience, people like that tend to not be good fighters. I'm going to tell you a quick story here. I had this guy, a Krav Maga instructor, come to my gym. Now, I'm, I'm not telling you this story to poo-poo on Krav Maga. I've met some, some Krav Maga guys who, you know, were pretty good at what they did, and some who, a lot, who couldn't fight their way out of a wet paper bag. Now, I had two students uh, from Israel who were former military, and they actually taught Krav Maga to the army in Israel. And when I told them about the self-defense industry in America, you know, where Krav Maga is this big self-defense thing, and they, they, they sell it as the ultimate self-defense system, they kind of laughed a little bit and said, what? No, Krav Maga is not self-defense, it's, it's about aggression. You see, what they did, they offered basically a two-week training program to the soldiers in basic hand-to-hand -hand combat with the end goal of, of rather than teaching individual techniques, because two weeks is not enough time to learn technique, instead of that, they would instill a mindset of be aggressive, go toward the danger, be the danger. Okay, because in two weeks, the best you can hope, hope for with, with a soldier sending them off to war is get them in a state of mind where they're not going to run away when push comes to shove. When the enemy comes at them, hopefully they engage rather than running away. And so that, that was their goal as Krav Maga instructors, to get their, their soldiers to go toward the danger and try to be the danger. Okay, to be aggressive rather than defensive. Because again, that's how wars are won. You win wars by killing the enemy. Not by simply intelligently defending yourself, by killing the enemy. That's what a war is about. Now, self-defense is a whole different thing. Again, I say this all the time. Self-defense is run away. Remove yourself from the danger. Survive. Again, the polar opposite of what my friends taught in the army. Now, that being said, this uh, Krav Maga instructor came in, and, and after one of my classes, he said, hey, can I show your students some technique? And I said, yeah, sure. He passed out these rubber knives and said, all right, you, you, you have the knife. You take away the knife from him. Do what you would do if this was a real fight. And my student without the knife said, um, 
help, help, police. And he started to run away. There's a maniac with a knife, help somebody. And he just sprinted. And we all chuckled a little bit. And the Krav Maga instructor said, no, 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 fight him. And my student said, no, that's stupid. I wouldn't do that in real life. I would run away. I would remove myself from that situation. He has a knife. That's a deadly weapon. If I engage him, there's a high probability that I will be stabbed. And that is 100% true. But the guy insisted, like, well, pretend you have to fight. Why do I have to fight? Just, just do it. So he said, okay, fine, I'll do it. So he engaged, and of course, they got stabbed a lot. And, you know, anytime you engage with somebody with a knife, you're probably going to get stabbed, probably several times. So this went on for a while, and, and, and then he started teaching my students some nonsense about, like, when your robotic attacker comes in attacking you with a knife like this, because that's the only way you can attack with a knife. You block and strike at the same time, immediately incapacitating him with a single punch. No, it doesn't work that way. So, I didn't say anything. You know, I was trying to be respectful to him. Like, okay, let's, let's see what you have to offer. I've got an open mind. But I think he, he noticed that I wasn't on board with this. So after, after the class, um, I was walking out and... Um, and he said, here, here, take this knife. I'm going to disarm you before you can stab me. You know, it's a rubber knife, rubber floppy knife. And I said, um, all right, sure. So I um, stuck out my arm, which he immediately tied up with, because it's human instinct to tie up with what's in front of you. And so I stabbed him 50 times with this knife. He's like, oh, let's do that again. He got very frustrated. So I assumed a different stance, like a fencer, and stabbed him about 50 more times. He got upset again. He said, again. So this time I clinched with him, just full on clinched with him, prison shank method, stabbed him in the kidneys in the back, and knifed him all over like 50 more times. Again, dude was very frustrated with this. Now, now I don't spend a lot of time training with the knife or knife defense. You know, I, I'm not ignorant of it. I, I do some knife stuff, but I'm not a knife fighting expert. Now that's important for this next part of the story. Um, so he got angry and he snatched the knife away from me and he said, well, let's see how you do, hotshot. I'm going to see if you can take the knife away from me. So I took off my shirt. And he looked at me like, why are you taking your shirt off? And I said, well, I'm not going to fight somebody who has a weapon without a weapon. And he was confused, but I held the shirt out in front of me. He starts stabbing at the shirt, because again, people tend to tie up with what's immediately in front of them. Caught the knife, put him in a shoulder lock, put him on the ground, slashed his own throat with the knife. Again, he was, he was angry, he was upset. He gets up again. Again, I trapped the knife with the shirt, put him on the floor. And again, that, that, that shirt method, you know, putting a shirt or a backpack or something in between you and the knife, um, that's, that goes back to medieval cloak and dagger or cloak and sword style fighting where they, they would take off their cape as a makeshift weapon, hold it in front of them, and use that to tangle up the sword or the knife of their opponent, and then use their dagger or their, their sword as a, as a, you know, stabbing weapon, auxiliary weapon. Right? But if you just have, if you have nothing else, again, get a weapon against, against an armed attacker, if you have to fight, which you probably don't. So again, he got, he got so angry, he jumped up in the air, slapped me on the head with, uh, with the palm of his hand, and then screamed out, I got you! I got you! At which point I said, uh, yeah, I, I guess you did. But... And the, the thing is, if we're not training realistically and, and playing around with rubber knives and helmets and protective gear and fake weapons and foam bats and that sort of thing, yeah, it's necessary if we want to live to train another day, but it gives us a lot of false confidence, false feedback. You have to be brutally honest with yourself. If somebody grazes you with a knife like that, I mean, that, that, that's death. Um, 
And you don't have to hit hard with a knife. It can be... I mean, you can light somebody up with a few quick flicks of the wrist with a knife. It's a super dangerous weapon. Okay, don't delude yourself. It's, it's not <clears throat> two easy steps to disarm somebody. So that's one of the reasons I think it's so important to, to start with unarmed, unarmed combat, even if your goal is to be a great weapons fighter, to be able to you know, use knives or swords or whatever, start with unarmed combat because it teaches you to use your own body and it allows you to train realistically because you can take a punch and live to train another day. You can't take a stab wound and then train the next day. Okay. Again, weapons are an extension of your body, not a replacement for it. So, anyway, take that for what it's worth. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.